and Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, uh, the, the next three teams, four games that, that you face, uh, you know, all teams at, towards the top of the Eastern Conference, um, you know, just, just how important is having that, that right energy level to, to give yourself, your guys self a chance to play well in those games? Yeah, and you know what? Before we start, I I, I just heard that um, that has been announced about uh, Tony Brown, the official. Um, so, on behalf of you know our players, our staff, everybody here uh, with the Magic, you know we we wish he and his family nothing but the best. He's a he's a class class act, and uh, we're all uh, you know our thoughts and prayers will be with him and his family. Um, and then in terms of your question, Dan, for sure. And you know what? I actually, there's so many ways that you can look at this, but to me, it's the best thing. You know, um, you know, we just had really, we just had our first practice that we've had. Uh, shoot, we, I mean, since before the New Orleans game, actually, we, it's been like two weeks before we, since we've really practiced. And um you know, our guys were, you know, disappointed in the way that we played last night and uh, wasn't anything crazy, but there was a lot of energy in the gym. And I think that, um, you know, being challenged like this uh, and playing elite teams uh, that are playing for something is a, is it, it, it will be a good challenge for our guys. So, um, you know, it's uh, something that I that I think we'll have the right attitude about. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, what is your sense about how morale is on the team? And even when a team is in a rebuild, do you want to see an element where guys get angry and, and frustrated that they're losing? 100%. I, I, I really do. I mean, I think that all of those things, um, you know, are, are challenges that we're going to have to, to a certain degree, figure out as we go. I mean, you know, I've never, uh, this is my first experience with something like this. Um, you know, the two, the two, it was pointed out to me a few days ago that the two teams that I took over as a head coach, both were coming off like really poor years. And yet in both situations, I could look at the roster and see that I, you know, by 40, 45 games in, I didn't know how good we could be either in Charlotte or the first year here, but I knew that we could make good gains and, and play well. And this is different than that. You know, um, you know, Jeff and I have talked in length about it. So it is different than that. And, um, and yet, um, you know, all, all NBA players uh, or even the fringe NBA players, they're terrific players. You know, I mean, they're, the guys that are here, they're the 450 best players in the world. And then, you know, or the fringe guys are whatever, 550. You know, they're great players. They're accomplished players. And they're prideful. So they want to play well. And uh, that's what I saw today. I, I liked uh, the way guys were in practice. Um, there was a lot of talk, uh, uh, both on offense and defense. And uh, hopefully that will uh, parlay into a better performance tomorrow. Philip Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Kind of building off, kind of building off that coach. Um, when you, you know, this may be something that the media, the media creates or a media narrative that that we create. But is there momentum that can? And I know you say that every team is different, but is there momentum, especially for young guys, in how they finish a season? Can they carry over confidence that they get from these last games into into their off season and into the next season? I think so. I really do. I mean, we talked a little bit about it today, and I and I think that. Um, I would say to me, it's for the off season, you know, which, which is the next big step. And, and I also think that for the, for the guys that are in their rookie year, again, not to make excuses for them, but, you know, no summer league, no September optional workouts. So I think that, you know, they always talk about guys make such a big jump after their rookie year. And I think those guys may be even more so because, they didn't have the luxury or the experience of, of summer league and like that. So I think there's, excuse me, the skill development part, but then there's also the continuing to study and learn about the NBA game. Josh Robbins. Steve, my understanding is, is that 
we media folks are going to speak to Terrence in a few minutes. And I, I'm just curious, uh, how do you size up the season that he's had um, and, and kind of wrap your arms around it? Well, I mean, obviously, he's very special to me uh, because, you know, uh, of how much, uh, you know, what a big part of things uh, that he was, you know, and, 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 you know, like one of the things I think you guys, I think you guys feel the same way because you're part of this too, is, you know, we've made a decision to start over, um, but he was a big part of what to a certain degree was a big step towards, you know, the franchise becoming more relevant again, right? Six years of the worst record in the NBA to two straight years in the playoffs. And none of that would have happened without him. Um, so I think that he took a big step in his career. Uh, but he also a big, I think one of the things about this league, again, you guys understand is he did it for a team that had success. You know, there's a big difference between putting up good numbers for a team that's not any good uh, or a team that has some success. And so I think it was good for him and good for us. This year has been frustrating for him. There's no question, um, you know, the injuries uh, and then the trades. And let's face it, I mean, change is a huge part of the NBA, uh, but this was significant change, you know, for a guy like him. I do think this is, I think that he has such a positive outlook um, on just the way that he lives. I think he's handled it well. Um and uh, I, you know, I talked to him for a little bit two days ago, and I, I think he's in a good place. Philip Rossman, right? Um, again, like uh, maybe injuries and availability kind of affected this, but do you want, do you try and put, put out some lineups or put out some combinations that you're thinking about for next year? Do you even think about what might work with some of the players that you expect to have next year? How do you, are you planning a little bit for the future with these last games too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we've been trying to do that little by little. Um, we got, you know, the Wendell injury kind of missed, messed us up a little bit along those lines, but hopefully he'll be back. He practiced today and hopefully he'll be back tomorrow. But uh, yes, no, no, for sure. I mean, I listen, what do you say? You can always learn something, right? Every game. So I know I, it's, a, it's a good point. We are trying to do that. Josh Robbins. You alluded to this, uh, but late last, with regard to Terrence, but late last night, your team was down, I think, 40, and uh, your team completed a, a lob pass that Dante Hall dunked. Uh, you were watching the the uh, the actual play, but behind you, Terrence jumped off, off his seat and was still engaged in the game with your team down 40. What does that tell you about what this team, this franchise means to him? No, and, and, and I think that, again, that's one of the things that I know, you know, MCW, uh, you know, all those guys, Markel, J.I., James, Ennis, um, all those guys that are hurt. You know, I, I think in the NBA, one of the yeah, – I, I don't want to get too crazy here, but one of the toughest things to establish is a belief in the way you do things when you don't have great success. And that's one of the th reasons I've so enjoyed really the, the, the previous two years. When you win uh, 55, 52, 53, 54, it's, it's still difficult in this league, uh, but guys are gonna believe in what you're doing. You know what I mean? Because you're winning most of your games. You know, I think whatever we were two years ago, 42 and 40 or 43 and 39, when you're down, you know, we were, I think that year, nine, 10 games under 500, yet those guys had a belief, you know, and they fought all the way back. That's not easy to do. You know, last year uh, we took the J.I. injury, you know, in Washington, uh, and it was a struggle to figure out how to play. And yet when you look at right before play stoppage last year, they had a belief in each other and that we could continue to get better. So that's one of the things that you don't want to lose. You know, it's hard to establish uh, within an organization, you know, a pride, a belief uh, in each other and what you're doing. Um, and I think that that's what those veteran guys are trying to do. Go ahead, Josh. 
Have you got a sense whether Wendell will be able to play tomorrow night? I assume he's going to be on the trip this time. Yeah, I think the plan is, I think it just depends on like how he feels tomorrow. And, uh, and I don't know about in terms of minutes or anything like that. Thank you for your time, coach. We appreciate it. Thank you.